There we go! Now I never have to decide which one I want to stream to ever again. Whoa! <laughs> Damn! I gotta... I gotta sit back here. This is... This is disgusting. Look at my forehead. Oh my gosh, I need a haircut so... Alright, so... If you guys saw the title, we're talking about the, the Game Awards today. Um... I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not impressed. I'm not that impressed. Hold on, let me turn the music down a little bit. So today we're talking about the Game Awards, and honestly, I'm not impressed, man. Although, I didn't play a lot of the games on this list. <laughs> I wanted to give my two cents, you know? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I think the world would be a drastically different place if I didn't take a six year long break <laughs> for making content. Hear me out, hear me out, right? Because there's a lot of people who have been put in positions and they're, they're, they're poor. They're terrible at it. You know what I mean? Terrible, terrible quality. It has shifted the way the world thinks because I haven't put content out there, right? So I really got to catch up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even think there would be a red pill movement if I was on the scene. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the nominees. Uh, obviously, the biggest one is like Game of the Year, right? So Game of the Year is probably one that is the i'm the least familiar with a lot of these just because you know when you're a broke boy you can't really play a whole lot of games you get to play like one of the seven or eight different games on here fortunately i got to play two uh let's see we're looking at i played the wukong demo so that's cool that's cool it's not elden ring but speaking of elden ring elden ring being on the list and it's a dlc like this is the first time they're changing the rules. I'm I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. I would have liked to see Silent Hill in this slot. I feel like Silent Hill would have been better. Um, I mean, you really could have put Stellar Blade in here. I feel like Stellar Blade would have been a good pick. That that probably would be my go-to instead of Elden Ring. I think we need like a, a DLC or an expansion category. You know what I mean? I feel like retroactively, we kind of have to go back and give Cyberpunk 2077 game of the year. You know what I mean? Like, that, that was such a huge shift, although, although, I feel like because of the changes that were made to Elden Ring, specifically for Shadow of the Erdtree, it is considered a separate game, although, you have to purchase the core game first, you know what I mean? So it's not, it's not like, it, it's basically like re-nominating re Elden Ring, and I really don't, I really don't mess with that. Wukong, cool, Balatro, it's like a playing card game. Can't, can't speak on it, didn't play it. You know what? One thing I will say, and this is this is definitely a shot to everybody else having like comments on, on games that they didn't play, specifically like Astrobot, Balatro, and Metaphor Refantizo. These are games, these are like gamer games. You know what I mean? Turn-based RPGs and JRPGs and things like that are a real gamer's game. And you really gotta be deep into the culture to truly appreciate these type of games. If it's not your cup of tea, say it's not your cup of tea. But there are definitely people out there who only play Call of Duty, Madden, 2K, you know, those type of dudes who suddenly have these large opinions that Astrobot and Metaphor don't belong in this category. So it's like, eh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if you had something different to say, like, oh, Space Marine should have been nominated for sure. Space Marine was a fantastic game. Absolutely. I got to play the shit out of that game. He said Concord should be game of the year. Bro, bro, the trolling. The trolling is immense. <laughs> the trolling is immense. The trolling is crazy. So um, then we have best game direction. Uh, from my understanding of what I remember best game direction is, it's basically creativity that has been implemented within this category. And of course, everything from Game of the Year is also on this one. I feel like this could go to Astrobot just because it's the most, it's definitely not going to Elden Ring. Best game direction, not at all, not at all. We've we've been there, done that, seen that, you know, creatively speaking, it's just not, it's just not it this year. Last year, sure, this year, no. I'd probably, and I definitely wouldn't give it to Final Fantasy either. I'd probably give it to either uh, Metaphor, because I played the demo for that, or Astrobot. I feel like Astrobot is the most unique title out of all of these, and it just comes up with cool creative ways to use the motion controls, and actually all of the buttons that you didn't use on the PlayStation 5 controller, you can actually use those now. Um, best narrative? This one kinda, 
I'm, I'm automatically taking Final Fantasy off. No thanks. Um, it's probably going to be Metaphor, Sinua Saga, Silent Hill 2. I'm not going to lie. Silent Hill 2 has been kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's okay. It's not the greatest game on this list by any means, but it's definitely up there. I'd probably give it to like Metaphor or Sinua, to be honest. Like Sinua, the last game had had very very good story i haven't played this one so i can really only nominate it so much it's like oh i haven't played that but what i have heard is fire so um i'd probably give that one like sound design or something like that those sinua saga the the first one insane insane i'm like hearing shit in the background and all sorts of stuff that one in silent hill 2 silent hill 2 has made me feel like there's actual like like when I have my headphones on, like we're gonna play later. When I have my headphones on, I be really thinking like somebody's behind me. You know what I mean? Like there's certain noises and whispers and stuff. I be, be like, hold on, let me turn this light down real quick. Is there somebody else in the house? So yeah, I can't, can't really mess with that one too much. Let's see, art direction. I feel like art direction, this is a pretty easy one. It's either Astro Bot or wukong for sure i feel like wukong is kind of a a shoe in for this definitely a shoe in for this one uh best score and music probably gonna go to a metaphor you know atlas they they always do it they always do it big man but final fantasy 7 is in here i'm I, i'm really don't like that it's not very diverse for these listings you know what i mean like for the first five five things we're looking at for the first five categories we're seeing the same four or five games you know what i mean like it, it wasn't like these are the only games to come out this year so head scratcher on that one i guess doesn't make any sense to me uh best audio design this one's got to go to silent hill for me for sure because i've actually played it um call of duty black ops 6 this is the most ridiculous so in case you guys didn't know there is a high fidelity or an hd um a high definition audio dlc that you can pay for for black ops 6 let me let me let me run that by you one more time so in call of duty black ops 6 you can pay money you can pay money for enhanced audio what the fuck am i listening to <laughs> that i need advanced enhanced audio How, how can you even nominate best audio if I can't hear it because I got to pay $20 for it? What kind of shit is that? What what world are we living in to where Activision thought they could get away with that? Honestly, Activision, Bungie, burn them to the ground. Burn the office to the ground. Let all the executives get fired, man. You know what's so crazy? Whenever they make bad decisions, and this is just kind of my hot take that I've been talking about for like the past year actually two years with overwatch um because you guys know me early adopter i've been been with them boys forever but i just feel like when they make dumb decisions why is it that the development team and the marketing team and the legal team and all the other you know small pawns get laid off first but they aren't the ones who decided to implement those decisions i feel like when it comes to cuts like, when it comes to layoffs and things like that, I think you should start at the top. You know what I mean? You should start at the executive level. You'll save the most money. <laughs> like, for real. Because it was your dumb decisions that put us in the predicament that we're in. You should be cut. You clearly made bad decisions, and I think you should be up out of here. Honestly. That's that's my decision. That's that's my That's my thing. It might be a hot take, but, you know. Anyway, uh, best performance, this is, what is this, voice acting? Yeah, we must be real low on here because they've got Brianna White from Final Fantasy VII. Okay, but also, what are we doing with Star Wars Outlaws? What's going on here? <laughs> what? There was nothing good about this game. I'm pretty sure there were actual audio issues with the game for verbal sound cues and shit so i'm i'm confused how this even got nominated we must be we must be low on stuff this year innovation in accessibility this one why is sinua saga not in here why is sinua not in here prince of persia lost crown this this was a fire game um accessibility i don't really 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I got, fortunately, thank God, I have, you know, control over all of my limbs. You know, maybe not my lips, you know, cause I just be yapping, but I can use my hands to play video games. And you know, that's a blessing that I really don't want to take for granted at all. So, and there, and my eyes, my eyes, my ears, you know, accessibility settings is all of that stuff. And you know, I feel like games all the time are really improving. The best one I've ever seen is the way Naughty Dog does it, where they like have um, controller vibrations for when there's like certain items and things like that on screen. And they have uh, the different colorblind modes. Like those are, those are so cool and like, when it comes to highlighting very teeny tiny objects, like they, they just do the best accessibility options. Games for impact. Now, what the fuck is game? <laughs> what is games for impact? Let's see. Games for impact is a category at the game awards that recognizes games that tackle important social issues, promote inclusivity. All right, this is the SJW award. Okay, for sure, for sure. Um, social impact, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Social impact, Tales of Kinzara. I feel like this was a sleeper game. I really wanted to buy this, but unfortunately, um, homie dropped it at a time where I didn't have a viable paycheck and it has not been viable ever since. Life is Strange, Life is Strange has been doing the SJW thing for a cool minute now. They'll probably take it. That's that's my guess. I haven't played any of these games on here. Best ongoing game. Um, we still got Fortnite. We still got Destiny 2 on here. I'm surprised I don't see Apex Legends. I want to see Helldivers 2 take this one. I feel like this this would be a really good pick. Um, I don't really mess with Final Fantasy 14 like that anymore. I did when it like first first came out in the PS3 days, but that that was the that was what 14 years ago at this point. So that was a whoa. Now that I think about it, yeah, that was 15 years ago, bro. Best community support. So I think by far, I feel like Satisfactory should have been on this. Obviously, I'm the only person and, you know, maybe like 12 other people who actually play Satisfactory. I feel like that probably should have been on this list, but who knows? I, I, I think it's Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 3 is probably the best community support on here. Um, if not, it's definitely Helldivers 2. For sure, it's Helldivers 2. And when it comes to community aspect, Helldivers had such, it had a historical run at the beginning of its lifespan. You know what I mean? Like, there's just no, there's no if, ands, or buts. I'm surprised I don't see Destiny 2 on the community support one. Um, best independent game. Now, I don't play any of these, but the fact that Balatro is on here, I have a feeling this is gonna take it. Next, uh, best debut indie game. I'm gonna be honest with you. The only indie games I played this year were uh, all of the super popular ones, Lethal Company. I, why is Lethal Company not on here? That came out this year, right? Lethal Company was huge this year. There was there was a couple of bangers. Where was it? Um, Lockdown Protocol, Lethal Company. Those were those were huge. Those were bangers this year, man. They made waves like Lethal Company and Lockdown Protocol were riding, at least Lethal Company for sure, was riding such a wave of popularity that I feel like Among Us was the last thing that was like really, 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 really big like that. You know what I mean? Damn, why is that not on here? Um, It'll probably go to Balatro. I don't, I mean, it's gotta, it's, if it's not best independent game, it'll definitely be best debut indie just because it got nominated for game of the year at this point, so. Uh, best mobile game, glad to see, I'm glad to see that, uh, what is it? Genshin Impact's not on here again, cause that would be crazy. Although, how did we get Pokemon TCG on here? Is this this a mobile game now? They have the, like the actual card game on here? That's crazy. Um, AFK Journey, okay. Balatro, once again. Now, I feel like it'll come down to one of these two. Wuthering Waves, which I played a little bit of, and Zenless Zone Zero, which I also played a little bit of. These two companies going back to back, bar for bar, big yiddies all over the screen, you know, hyper-sexualized anime girls, uh, amazing husbandos. Yeah, why would this not, <laughs> why would this not get, hello? Either one of these is gonna win. So it's gonna come down to either one of these two. Uh, the rest of these games are not holding up to 
the juggernaut that is these two games. Like, especially for Zenless. Like, I feel like that we were waiting on this game for four fucking years only for it to come out. And I was like, eh, I don't want to play this shit. Best VR AR game. I see a lot of people playing Batman uh, Arkham Shadows. That's the only one on here I've I've seen people playing. Um, as far as like streams and content and stuff like that, that's the only one. Um, best action game. Now this, this is something, this one right here kind of bothers me a little bit. This is a tough category. This is a very, very tough category. Personally for action game, the best action game I played this year was definitely Warhammer by far. And then right behind it would probably be Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Black Ops was really, really good this year. Um, I haven't, first of all, I haven't played Call of Duty since Black Ops 3? Black Ops 4, maybe? If that. So I definitely didn't play any of those other Modern Warfare ones. So yeah, um, Warhammer for sure. This shit had me screaming at the screen, just ripping up monsters and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's it. This one's it. This one's it for me. Um, best action adventure game. We got Astrobot. We got a sleeper hit, Prince of Persia. This was really, really good. Silent Hill 2. Okay. Star Wars Outlaws. This being on here is a joke. This has got to be a joke. I'm surprised Zelda, The Legend of Zelda, was not a nominee for Game of the Year. I feel like this is another contender you could have put on the list. Yet they decided to put Elden Ring on there for some reason. I... I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. So, um, personally for this one, I, I think it's going to probably go to Astrobot. I would not consider that action adventure at all, but it unfortunately is not going to be Silent Hill 2, which I feel like has the highest quality. Uh, maybe not as much as Astrobot actually. Now that I think about it, give it to Zelda. I, I give it to Zelda. Why not? Why not? Best RPG, um, Dragon's Dogma 2, um, Shadow of the Ur Tree, okay, cool, uh, Final Fantasy, okay, cool, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, uh, I heard this one was not great, but, you know, fit, fits the realm of, of, uh, the Yakuza series, so, and then we have Metaphor in here, this will probably either go to Metaphor or Shadow of the Ur Tree, unfortunately, um, I would like for Metaphor to get it, but, you know, strange things happen, man. It'll probably go to Elden Ring, to be honest. Best fighting game. Now, this is the category I'm obviously biased in. I'm obviously biased because I've been playing the crap out of multiverses. Um, and I, I'm not playing Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. I'm not pe paying $70 for a game I'm going to play for two weeks. So that's, that's an absolute no-no. Uh, the most exciting thing for me on this list was the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection, but obviously it's a remake, it's a remaster, whatever, rehash, whatever. Don't really, I really don't consider that as, you know, a new fighting game to be on here. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is not an actual fighting game. The one that should win is Grand Blue Fantasy, for sure, easily, uh, just because it's an actual, like, fighting, fighting game. It's like... When you're deep in the niche, you know what Grand Blue Fantasy is, but Tekken 8 will probably take it. You know, this is a popularity contest. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't really mess with multiverses like that, so that's not really going to win it. I would love for multiverses to win it, but it's not. Not even close. Not even close. It's going to be Tekken 8. Um, Tekken 8 deserves to win it. Uh, Grand Blue should win it. Dragon Ball is probably going to win it, though. Um, best family game. This is Astro. Astrobot by far. Um, then there was also Super Par Mario Party. This made a huge, huge splash this year. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the popularity wave for this game was insane. I don't really play my Switch like that because it's not mine, uh, number one. And number two, I don't buy Switch games. Uh, I just, it's just something I don't do. <laughs> it's just something I don't do. So if it doesn't show up on the little emulator thing on the, you know, website I use, nah, I'm not playing it. You can miss me with this one. I I don't recognize any of these. I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm not going to put it in there. Um, best sports game. Uh, best multiplayer. Helldivers 2. Got to give that to Helldivers 2, man. Although they got Warhammer on here. 
Oh, I got Warhammer on here. I was not expecting that. Tekken being the best multiplayer game is crazy. Um, it'll probably go to Helldivers. If Helldivers doesn't win, you know, any of the other categories, it's definitely winning multiplayer of the year. For sure. Um, Call of Duty also was really good. I'm I'm still playing it. I got, I got this thing downloaded, man. We're, we're gonna play Call of Duty later. Um, I feel like this is probably the toughest category. Uh, game of the year, yeah, we can we can yap about for sure, but best adaptation. This is tough. This is tough. Um, I heard Like a Dragon is trash. Uh, Tomb Raider is okay. I started watching that this morning. I got past the first episode. I'm like, eh, it's okay, it's cool. I got in the first 10 minutes of Arcane and I was like, this is the second coming. This is the second coming of the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all, all three of them. All three of y'all pulling up. Okay, this was really good. But the absolute behemoth that is Fallout. Fallout, I feel like, was the is the best in this entire thing. Fallout felt like I was watching the video game being played in front of me. There's, this is perfect. Fallout was perfect. Arcane is good, sure. Arcane is great. It's like 10 out of 10, but Fallout is 11. Fallout is 11, 11 out of 10. But because this is a popularity contest, Arcane, Arcane is gonna win. Arcane is absolutely gonna win. Uh, most anticipated game, yeah, get, get out of here. Get out of here, what, what is this? Death Stranding 2 over these over these other games? You're you're absolutely insane. Metroid 4, I feel like we've been hearing about that for nine years now, like <laughs> sleep. Uh, for me, it's Ghost of Yote, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, just so that way Sucker Punch can hurry up and get back to Infamous where they belong. Uh, that would be great, but mm, them boys not gonna be happy if this one wins. Uh, and then Grand Theft Auto 6, I'm obviously I'm here for it, but it's not my most anticipated game by any means. Honestly, I'm more excited for Death Stranding than I am Grand Theft Auto. That's just me, but I I play narrative based games, man. That's that's what I wanna that's what I wanna be on. So uh, then we have content creator of the year. The only one I know of is, I feel like I've heard of typical gamer, uh, case. O. he's, you know, the heavy set white dude. Uh, he's the only one I've, I've actually seen before. So I, I don't know. And then they throw in these last like esport categories, like bro, who I'm sure somebody cares, but this whole esports section right here is all like snoozer bro snoozer like i don't I, I don't know any of these teams like i don't i don't care the snooze awards bro so um when is the awards i think it's december december 12th at 4 p.m my time it's like either four or five o'clock so i put it in my calendar i'm excited for it it is what it is man so we will pro depending on what i'm doing that day um I'll probably be streaming it, maybe? If not, I'll definitely make a video about it. So um, definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I would love to see what you guys would have liked to play this year or see get nominated. Honest, honestly, a lot of stuff got snuffed. There were plenty of games to come out in the last year and I feel like the game awards didn't really reflect that very well this year. So, you know the same four or five games in every single category, but it's kind of always like that. I would love to see the committee of people that uh, take these nominations and decide which ones are gonna be part of the show because I wanna see what their credentials are. I don't think all of them are Jeff Keighley's decision. I think there's definitely a team behind it. So I would, I would love to see that.